So, uh, welcome everyone to TPS Plus. Um, the operator for today's talk is Adit Vaget, and uh, as usual, helping us with TPS Plus, uh, Gautam Kamut, uh, Clemma Kanon, Thomas Hollenstein, and Thomas Vidik. Uh, Adit will now go around the table and introduce the groups. Okay, thanks, you, India. So today we have uh, we have Amit from uh, University of Waterloo and the group there. Hi, everyone. Uh, we Good have. Oh, yeah, we have the group from MIT. Hi, uh, IG. See you guys. Oh, you're a bit shaky. Uh, uh, Piyush with the group from uh, Kotec. Hi, Piyush. And we have Sorachai from with the group from uh, Michigan State. And uh, Yijun Chang from the University of uh, Michigan. And you are <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. And. That's it. What others are still joining, we're still expecting UCSD to join. So back to you, uh, Anidia. Anidia, yeah, you're you're muted. Sorry. Oh, thanks. Uh, sorry. So uh, as usual, before we start the talk, a few reminders. Um, during the talk, all the the audience will be muted. But if you have a question, uh, you should unmute yourselves and ask a question. Um, the few next few talks are, so two weeks from now we have Van Ross, and four weeks from now we have Stephen Fenner lined up. Uh, so now for today, today's speaker is Tali Kaufman. Um, Tali, uh, Tali works in the broad area of uh, the overlap of a algebra and computer science. She has produced a uh, number of stunning results in algebraic coding theory, property testing, and most recently she has turned her attention to the theory of high dimensional expanders. And today she's going to talk about construction of uh, constant degree high dimensional expanders, uh, which answers the open question of Gromov. Uh, so, welcome, Tally. Hey, hi. <laughs> hi, everybody. Uh, so, shall I start? Uh, yeah, yeah we, we're ready. Yes. Yeah, we're ready. Okay. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> Uh, so the people from UCSD will join later. I should just start. Yeah, because others. Uh, yeah, we're all here. Okay. They're they obviously. Okay. Late. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'm talking about uh, bounded degree high dimensional expanders, and uh, this is a joint work with uh, David Kashdan, Alex Lubotsky, and uh, Shai Eva. Okay. So I will start with. Uh, Few things that we all know about high dimension, about the regular expanders, the uh, one-dimensional case, and then we see how they generalize to the high-dimensional case. So we talk, when we talk about expanders, the one-dimensional case, we measure the expansion using two point of views. The first point of view is the Chigo constant, or how strongly connected is the graph. So this is one measure, like we, s we think about a set of vertices, and we want to say that every set of vertices, there are many edges going outside the set. So this is one measure of expansion. And the other measure of expansion, which is a pseudo-randomness measure, is uh, we, do it, it, we use the second largest, eigen, le second largest eigenvalue, and we want to say that the number of edges between every two large set of vertices is roughly as it would be if the graph was a random graph. And these two uh, measures, what we know about them uh, for graphs, we know that these two measures, even though they are different, they are really basically the same. So they are, hi uh, Shaha. <laughs> uh, so if the graph is, uh, uh, is an expander according to, to one measure, then it's also an expander according to the other measure. And, and the relation between them is given by the Chigio inequality. What we're going to see is that this nice relation between the, the combinatorial expansion of the graph, which we refer to as the Chigio constant, and the spectral expansion, or the pseudo-randomness expansion of the graph, which we refer to by the second large eigenvalue, these two things, which, be, which are related so nicely for graphs, stops to be related so nicely when we move to the higher dimensional case. And this uh, introduces uh, some of the big difficulty in studying higher dimensional expanders. OK, so for graphs, uh, uh, it is very easy to see that a random deregular graph is, uh, is a good expander. And most of the study was, in all kinds of ways, to get 
uh, explicit constructions of bounded degree graphs which are expanded. But for getting a random uh, deregular graph, this is easy to pull. And we will see that in high dimensional case, the picture is completely different. We don't know any uh, uh, random uh, bounded degree high dimensional expander. So really, the picture gets different. OK, so what is, so I reviewed a little bit of, of things that we know about uh, one dimensional expanders, about regular expanders, and what I want to talk today. So today, I want to discuss what is at all the definition of a high dimensional expander. And, and uh, discuss the question of whether there are bounded degree high dimensional combinatorial expanders, the ones that are going to generalize the Chigel uh, or the, combina the combinatorial expansion. And what is the definition? And it's not at all clear that bounded degree object exists, and we want to refer to that. So, uh, so before we start our study, we need to introduce the object that we want to study. So when we talked about expander, the object was a graph. Now when we move to the high dimensional case, that the object that we study uh, is a simplicial complex. So what is a simplicial complex? A d-dimensional simplicial complex is basically a hypergraph. So if it is a d-dimensional simplicial complex, it is a hypergraph, a d plus one hypergraph. So the largest uh, edges of, of size d plus 1, but it's a specific uh, uh, hypergraph when we want a closure property. So it, if we have an edge of size d plus 1, then all its subsets are also uh, part of our hypergraph. So this is important. This is a simplicial complex. And once we have this definition, then the, the complex we will denote it by x and its set of vertices will be denoted by x0, its set of edges x1, etc., till, till xd. And so just to make sure, because this is always very confusing uh, to me, this is, this is basically hypergraph, right? You just, that's the connotation, yeah, this is your convention? Yeah. No, the, yeah, it's a hypergraph, but the, with the closure property, so this is important. In hypergraphs, normally, we refer to regular hypergraphs, you have edges each of size d. So here, it's important that we we have all all the edges down till one, so that's but you can think of it as some convention because it's there. You know, it's yeah. determined. You only have to determine the hypergraph, yeah, the exactly. one uniform hypergraph, exactly. and then you determine exactly. it. Okay. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And uh, and an important uh, important uh, thing that will play a role for us is the link or a neighborhood of something. So this is going to be a key player in, in what we're going to talk today. So in a graph, uh, we can think about the neighborhood of a vertex. And then we will see a set of vertices, which are its neighbors. Uh, uh, in a D, if we have, say, a, a two-dimensional object where we have vertices, edges, and triangles, then the neighborhood of a vertex will be the set of edges, a set of vertices, uh, that are neighbors to it, uh, and so now its link is basically uh, like in the picture. So, so each edge will be its each edge in in the original uh, two-dimensional thing will become a vertex, and each triangle in 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 the link or in the neighborhood of a vertex will become an edge. So, so this is and and you can do it for every Face, so you can think what are the neighborhood of the face, and and you can you, you can think about uh, about uh, about the edges, about the faces that you would get by removing your your specific face to which you are interested in its environment. So, like in this picture, think about this picture as a two-dimensional. Uh, uh, hypergraph, like it contains the, the vertices that you see, the edges that you see, and each triangle that you see is also uh, in the complex, and, and the link of this red vertex is a graph. It's now a one-dimensionless, is a graph that contains vertices and edges. 
the vertices actually correspond to the original edges, and the edges correspond to the original triangle. So this is important. Object is going to play a role for us. Tali, can I ask a question? Yes. Hi. So it's Hi. not the same as taking the induced complex on the neighborhood vertices, right? So if, if for example, you have in a graph, you know, if you have a neighborhood of a vertex, you get the set of vertices there, but you also take the edges between them. No, so no, no. Those, right? so, so you take what? So it's one dimension less. So it's so you don't see. Yeah, exactly. So so the link of 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 somebody is like uh, uh, yeah is not the induced uh, neighborhood, but as it is defined, you take all the cells that containing it and you, you remove it from the cells. So you take all the edges that contain your original vertex. And you remove it, you get so like for example, as your in your example, uh, the edge that was in the induced thing does not contain this vertex, so it is not in its link. Okay, uh, so it's basically as it said, you you take every other hyper edge that you contained this one that we are interested in, you remove it, and you see what you got. Okay. Okay, so we'll refer, we will go back to it later. Okay, so so now when I, I introduce the simplicial complexes and the links in them, uh, and I want to study high dimensional expansion, I want to tell you why a motivation, why people were starting to get interesting, interested in studying these high dimensional uh, expansion thing. And basically, much of it started with the question of GROMO. So Gromov was interested in the following thing. Uh, he asked, if you have a d-dimensional complex and you want to embed it in Rd, so you you put you you put the vertices in Rd and then you draw some straight line, say, between the vertices and you get all kinds of suppose you have a two-dimensional things and you get vertices, edges, and triangles. Uh, you can draw a straight line between the vertices, and or you can draw all kinds of just continuous lines between the, between the vertices, and you'll get all kinds of triangles if we talk about dimension two. And what Gorov asked uh, uh, for a complex, is it, is it true, uh, or a complex has a topological overlapping property if for every embedding, for every embedding of the complex in RD, there is a point that is covered by constant fraction of the simplices that obtain, of the faces that are obtained by the embedding. So we, we put the vertices, we draw the lines, either we draw straight lines and then we'll call it geometric overlapping, or we are allowed to draw any kind of continuous lines and like in this weird triangle, and then we will call it topological overlapping. And we are interested if for every embedding, there is a point in RD that is covered by constant function of the synthesis. So he was interested to understand uh, uh, which complexes has, uh, have this topological overlapping property. And, and uh, he related this to the combinatorial expansion. So he was interested if there are bounded degree complexes with this topological overlapping property, where we draw these triangles and they are kind of skewed, we put some uh, uh, continuous function between the vertices. And he was interested if such at all exists. So that's the question that interested him, and he wrote like 100 pages paper about it and more, and, and studied it in depth. And he managed to show that there are unbounded degree complexes with topological overlapping. And with other people, he managed to show that there are bounded degree complexes with the weaker thing of geometric overlapping. When we draw straight lines, uh, that we have straight lines, so kind of we have triangle with straight lines. But he couldn't determine whether there at all exist bounded degree uh, complexes with the topological overlapping property. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. I, I don't understand the meaning of this a point covered by constant fraction of... Uh, ah, so, so like a point is like there is a point in the plane that is contained in it. So for a triangle, uh -huh. uh, uh, you look for a point that is inside this triangle. So if a point is inside the triangle, it's contained in triangle. And, and triangles are going to all kinds of directions. So you want a point in a plane 
that it is part of each, that it, it belongs to the area of each of many of the triangles that will that uh, will occur. Okay, so in, in terms of like regular graphs, what like does it for mean? Example, for example, if, 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 if your complex were, was kind of uh, like few triangles one next to the other, then, uh -huh. then you couldn't find a point that cover, uh, that is, belongs to, uh -huh. uh, to many, to constant function of the triangles if, if there were only, if you, all the triangles were, were one next to the other. Uh, so yes. for graphs, is it equivalent that any cut contains a constant fraction of the edges? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So for graphs, this is exactly the thing. So for graphs, uh, for graphs, uh, the analog is that we want to put them on a on a one-dimensional thing. So on the, on, the, on the line. So if we draw the graph on a line, yes, uh, uh, so there is a point that is covered by for constant fraction of the edges because if we draw uh, if we draw the graph on the line, and now we partition it into, say, the, the, the vertices in, in the first half of the line and the vertices in the other half of the line, then we know that constant fraction of the edges will go across, and they will, so, so, and they, so the, the point in the middle of the line, uh, there will be constant fraction of the edges that go across it. So it's just a one-dimensional thing. Uh, uh, so, I mean, and, and in higher dimension, uh, so we don't have lines, now we start to have two dimension things which are triangles, and, and, and higher dimensions are like that. Uh, but, I mean, if you are with me with that, good, if you want I can repeat, but this is a motiv, but this is a motivation, so, so, I mean, if, anyway, I, yeah. Really? Um, is it obvious what happens when you take the complete graph? No, not at all. Actually, I, I um, the, actually this is a very interesting question. I, I, I didn't go, wanted to go in depth into that, but since you asked, so in a complete graph, this was exactly a question that was studied very intensively in computational geometry. So the question was, uh, you have uh, endpoints and and you draw all lines between them, between the endpoints. So it co corresponds to the complete complex. So you have endpoints, and you draw all, uh, all points. So each one is connected to every. So each vertex is connected to everybody, everyone else. Uh, and the question was, if there is a point in, in say, and, and you want, and now you want to see the triangles that you got. And the question that was studied heavily in computational geometry is whether there is a point in R2 that is covered by constant function, and, and the answer was yes, by Borosh and Foretti, and like, there is a point that is covered by two ninths of the triangles, and, and this was, and this is, uh, 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 tight. Tight. and this is tight, mm. uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's an interesting mm. that when Gorm studied this question, for the higher dimensional case, using his method, he actually got better things than were known before by the people in computational geometry. And actually his result applied, so he managed to, to, show, uh, to show that you can even uh, do it in the complete complex uh, when you don't draw straight line, when you draw any continuous lines between the point, there is still a point that is covered by constant function, and constant function that he got is better than the constant function that people knew uh, for straight lines. So, this so the, the computational geometers, uh, the two nines is for the geometric case. You draw straight lines between. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the high, and the higher dimension case, the the exact constant is not known. And Gong managed to get a better uh, constant than was was known before. Before. Uh, Ali, uh, another question. What's the yeah. definition of bounded degree here? So what's the degree here? The degree where. So you said well, bounded degree complexes. Ah, constant, constant degree, not what bounded degree. So you can do any degree that you want. So uh, you can you can do I don't know some constant degree that uh, some some const, some large enough constant exact exact degree. I'm no, not no, sure. No, no. What's the definition of the degree here? Let's say here ah. it's is the number of triangles, the number of edges touching the vertex. Ah, ah, very good, very good. So we we refer in bounded degree. We refer to how many. Uh, uh, so we want that the number of of 
of ev all the degrees are constant. So uh, in every uh, uh, every vertex touch constant number of uh, constant number of of all constant number of edges, constant number of, of triangles, constant number of any higher degrees. So like the no total number of hyper edges in the complex is uh, uh, is n the, the number of vertices times some constant. So everything, yeah. One, this is a good question. There are some studies where you, yeah, where this is not uh, the case. But Gomov was interested in in bounded degree in all levels. You know, okay. I to get confused. Isn't it all equivalent? Like, if I know that each vertex isn't most that many no. edges, I also know it's the most that many triangles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could say, well. I have all possible, so look, so another version which is commonly studied recently is, uh, well, up to level, up to level, uh, say, D, I have all possible, so all, all uh, D, choose, N choose D edges in my complex, so it's not a constant uh, degree, but in level uh, D plus one, uh, uh, say each each uh, in a level d plus one. Now I have only constant many of. I mean, in, in not constant many. No. So now in the highest level. Uh, okay, let's think about a, a two dimension. Okay, let's think about two dimension. Guess it will be easy. So we have so we have vertices. We have all edges. So we have n square edges. And now on each edge, uh, there are only three triangles. So this is, for some people, this is bounded degree because somehow the upper level is bounded degree, but we have many edges. But we are, we, are think, <laughs> we are thinking about the, we have constant, so we have n times, so everything is, is bounded degree. We have few edges, so uh, linear number of edges, linear number of triangles, linear number of any, any, any set of faces. Mm. That's where you see the difference between thinking of superficial complexes and hypergraphs. Like for hypergraph, I would be happy if each vertex in most uh, five triangles, but once you look at the shadow, like yes. in terms of edges, and you might, you know, might yes, be exactly. Okay. exactly, 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 exactly. Okay, very good. Yeah, yes, yes, very good. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. In that sense, is 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 somewhat different. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now I see where. Okay, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so, so, how this question of Gromov is it all related to the combinatorial expansion? So, Gromov couldn't find bounded degree complexes uh, with this topological overlapping thing, but he showed a criterion. So, he, he proved that if you find a high dimensional complex which is a combinatorial expander, then it must have the topological overlapping property. So, so, uh, so the I did not yet define what co commutator expansion is, but something that uh, generalizes the, the Chigger constant. If you have this, then you will get a topological overlapping thing. So this is why why people were, what started in under, to, to study whether one can get this combinatorial uh, expansion, sorry. this high high dimensional combinatorial thing. So oh, because sorry. yeah, sorry, I'm going back. What the, I, I'm still confused. What I said doesn't make sense. I mean, if you have, if you, if a vertex is contained in an edge, it must also be contained in a triangle associated with the edge, right? So, how can it be that your vertex is in so many edges but not so many triangles? Because it's not that. Uh, so it is for you think that if say you have, uh, so on each, so you declare you declare so. We have the closure property is like if a triangle is in the complex, then its edges are also in the complex. But but if a, a, a three edges form a triangle, then it doesn't mean that this triangle is in your complex. This so is true, but the minute there is an edge, it means there's some triangle associated with it. Can there be an edge that doesn't come from a triangle? Uh, uh, there, there, like there is a so like like in the example I gave you, yes. So so you have all vert, all vert, you have n vertices. Now you put all edges between them, and now, and now you don't so now you don't declare so it, so you don't declare each three sets of of edges that you see as a triangle as a triangle in your complex. Not every three ver vertices form a triangle. Now you put only uh, um, you you just 
uh, yeah, on, on each edge, normally it could belong to, uh, so normally each edge uh, could belong to n triangles, so you could, you could decide which is the next vertex. But you declare in your complex only three vertices to be really a triangle in the complex. So you see, in the complex you declare which are your triangles. It's not that every three edges. It's a hypergraph, but I'm, I'm still confused about your edge set. Uh, if I have a hypergraph and each vertex is only in five uh, triangles, then the total number of triangles is only like, you know, uh, no, so, 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 no, no, but when, uh, in my example, uh, we, the number of triangles will be, say, n squared, 3 n squared, 3, uh, while, while the maximum number of triangles is like n to the 3. And it's not a degree? So, for our case, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Go ahead, uh, Shacham. Yeah, I think the short answer is yes, I mean, so you can have edges don't count for triangles. Okay, so I should not think of it as a hypergraph, but really as a simplification complex. There might be edges that are not inherited. But I think the example that Tali is talking about, the cases where you have bounded degrees, then you can just restrict yourself to edges coming for triangles. Good. But in the more general case of simplification complexes, edges, there could be more edges than just the ones coming for triangles. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks, Yacha. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, so once uh, Gromov uh, showed this relation between congruential expansion and topological overlapping, people were starting to study, uh, to study it. And what they showed uh, is that if you have, so in the higher dimensional case, you could also refer to some notion of Laplacian, which I don't re define explicitly here. But like in graph, Laplacian correspond to relation between vertices and edges. So you can have high order Laplacian that will relate to relation between edges and triangles and, and like that. And, uh, and, and, and you can ask yourself uh, whether these high order Laplacian have spectral gap. And what was shown is that you, if you have spectral gap in high order Laplacians, this will imply some pseudo randomness property, which will generalize the, the phenomena that we see in graph. Like in graph, pseudo randomness is that every two sets of vertices we have the correct number of triangles. Here, every three set, every three, every three set of vertices which are large enough, uh, the 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 density of triangles in them will be correct if you have spectral gap in high order Laplacians, and and people show that this pseudo randomness implies the geometric overlapping. Uh, so spectral gap somehow implies some high order pseudo randomness, and this implies geometric overlapping. However. This spectral gap uh, does not imply combinatorial expansion. So there are complexes which you can get spectral gap in the Laplacians, but you can show that they are not, don't have this combinatorial expansion thing, and they will not be uh, topological overlapping. So somehow, something which is very weird going on here, that in high dimensional case, the pseudo-randomness behavior does not equivalent in any sense to the combinatorial expansion. So this, but this sort of define, depends on how you define pseudo-randomness. Maybe this is just not the right way of defining pseudo-randomness here. Correct, correct, correct. Of course, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about the, the things that were studied. Yes, correct, yeah. Everything is just in its beginning, so many things are yet to be discovered. Yes, correct. Uh, okay, so I, I did not yet define what commentary expansion is because it is a bit difficult and I'm going to do it next, but let me say what, what did we find, and then I'll go and define it and say how things are kind of uh, built up. So, so the, ma the first main theorem is that we have a combinatorial uh, a criterion for combinatorial expansion. So it will not come from spectrum of Laplacians, but it will come from the links. So somehow the criterion will tell you that if the links of the complex are expanding enough, then the complex is a combinatorial expander. Uh, and, and using this criterion, we, we managed to find explicit complex, ex explicit bounded degree complexes that meet this criterion, and they are, form a family of bounded degree combinatorial expanders. And using the relation that Gromov made between combinatorial expansion and topological overlapping, we answer Gromov uh, in the affirmative, and we show that they are bounded degree complex with the topological overlapping. So these are the results. And and for the next of the talk, 
I want to define what are high dimensional combinatorial experiments, so to, to, to make the definition, and then to tell you what is the criterion that imply combinatorial expansion uh, and what is the construction of this pump that would be combinatorial expansion. Okay, so we we'll see how we do with time. Okay, so uh, so about the definition of of, a, of combinatorial expansions. Uh, before I get to it, I want to revisit the definition of uh, of uh, expanded graph, the one-dimensional case. What does it mean to be a combinatorial expander in a one-dimensional case? So basically, I, I want to say that we require two things which we normally say together. So what does it mean that a graph is an expander? It means, first, that uh, the only sets which are not going to expand are trivial. Which are the trivial sets? The sets that, the empty set and the set of all vertices. So we first say that the only sets which will not expand are the trivial ones. And second, we say that we want kind of a stability requirement, in quality. We, we want that uh, for every set that must expand, that this boundary is not zero, uh, in the boundary, we, uh, uh, the number of edges that this set hit odd many times is proportional to the distance of, so we, we kind of say it, we, we look on the ratio between the number of edges between the set and the complement divided by the minimum between the set and the complement. But what is this minimum? So I want to argue that we divide actually by the distance to the non-expanding set. So we divide by the distance between A and the non-expanding sets, which are, Z, which are the empty set and, and V. So, so this is what we are actually doing. And this will be instructful when we move to the higher dimensional uh, case. So let's move to the two-dimensional case. Uh, and the definition of two-dimensional commercial expander uh, is actually was obtained independently by Lineal Meshulam. They were studying generalization of the GNP model of graph to the higher dimensional case. And Gormov that was interested in the topological overlapping. And they came to the same definition. Uh, so think about a complex that it is a two dimension. So we have vertices, edges, and triangles, and we want to measure a high dimensional expansion. So, to me so how to measure the expansion? So now we have a set, we want to consider sets of edges, and we want expansion with respect to triangles. So what does it mean, as expansion with respect to triangles? Like before, uh, we, uh, we counted how, in the one-dimensional case, we counted the edges that were, we things were in the boundary if they hit a, an edge an odd many times. Now, a triangle will be in the boundary of a set of edges, yeah, if, if it is hit by the set of edges odd many times. So, so we see, so we go along the triangles, we see how many edges from the set are in the triangle. If odd, if this number of odd, we say that the triangle is in the boundary, otherwise it is not in the boundary. So the triangle is in the boundary if it is hit odd, ma odd many times. So, for example, if you see my picture uh, down there, so if, if our sets of edges are the blue edges, then all these red triangles, you see that they hit this set odd many times, so all these blue triangles, uh, all these red triangles will be in the boundary. And another thing which one should note is there are sets of edges which will not expand, which every triangle hit them even number of times. And these set of edges are exactly cuts. So if you have a cut in a graph, what is a cut? A cut is something that every triangle touches. It. Either, either it does not touch it at all, or it touches it twice. So, so like in the one-dimensional case, the things that did not expand were the empty set and the set of all vertices. Now the trivial things which are not going to expand are cuts, because, because in every complex, uh, uh, every set of edges which is a cut, uh, every triangle uh, uh, hit it uh, uh, even number of times, so it is uh, so its boundary is zero. So once we have this knowledge, it's uh, we can define what is a two-dimensional combinatorial expansion. So we 
uh, omit first the, so it is called co-boundary expander. And again, we have two requirements. We, we require that the non-expanding sets are only the trivial ones, as we had in the one-dimensional case. So the only things, so now we have a set of edges, and, 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 we, and we look on its boundary. And the boundary is like it, it gives values to the triangle. Each triangle gets the value by summing up the edges along it. And, and an edge will be, and the set of edges will be non-expanding if the boundary is, uh, is, is zero. And then we, and what we say is that we allow only two cuts to be non-expanding. So only the trivial one are non-expanding. And the ones that expand should expand with proportion to the distance from the non-expanding set. So if something has a, a non-zero boundary, then it should expand a lot. So it means that the number of triangles that it hit odd many times, yeah, the number of triangles in its boundary should be proportional to, to its distance from the non-expanding sets, like we had in the one-dimensional case. So we require some, some kind of a high-order high Chigge with this, that uh, measure the relation between edges and triangles. And we also require the one-dimensional Chigge. So to be a two-dimensional complex, which is a combinatorial expander, and is called actually co-boundary expander, is that you have to be, so your, your one skeleton or, or your graph representation should be expanding as a graph. So that your H1, your Chigge constant, should be bounded away uh, by an epsilon, but also your H2, your, your, the expansion that we measure between edges and triangles should be also bounded away by epsilon. So this is the definition, and you can generalize it uh, to higher dimension. I don't want to, re to but, but somehow if you get the idea, then the higher dimension you want that triangles uh, will expand with respect to pyramids, and pyramids will, exp will expand with respect to, to, to the next level, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so roughly, these are, this is the definition. So uh, this is what we mean by high dimensional expander. So now the non-expanding sets, which were trivial in the one-dimensional case, are, are not so trivial anymore. And this is a little bit, makes things a little bit complicated. Tali, yeah? Yeah. question. So why does it make sense to look on things modulo 2 and not uh, something else? <laughs> OK, so you can, you, can, uh, you can make the definition under any field. Uh, what Gromov showed, it was important for him to do it modulo 2 to get the relation to the topological overlapping. But you could do it also any way you wanted. And there are some things that, yeah. So you could do it other ways. But Gromov showed that if you do it modulo 2, then it implies this topological overlapping. So this is why people, but, but once, yeah. But, but the method that we proved actually showed that you could do it over other fields. So you can think about it as summation over F2. You could think it as. Yeah, you can do an, an many other things once you, once, once you understand what's going on. Uh, OK. Uh, I want to say uh, that is important that it is important for us. So this was a definition that Gromov and Lineal Meshulam uh, gave for a high dimension combinatorial object. But it is important for us to re relax a bit the definition. Because the definition asks that the only thing that will not expand are the trivial ones. And things that expand should expand a lot. Uh, we relax it a little bit, and, and we call this relaxation a cosystolic expander. And we, the researchers say that the non-expanding sets are either trivial or large. OK, so we don't insist on, on non-expanding sets be, being only trivial. We say well, either trivial or very large. Very large is that the support is proportional to the size of the number of vertices in the complex. So to understand this, this relaxation is important for us because we can study it. And, uh, but just to understand what this relaxation means, the co-boundary expanders for graph means that the graph is actually an epsilon combinatorial expander, as we know. While cosystolic for graph would mean so, so there can be some sets which will be 
uh, non-expanding, but they, are, they must be large. So it means that the graph is actually a union of constant many large connected components where each one by itself is an expander. So, so this is kind of the, the called systolic relaxation. And why do we study it? Because it's easier to study, it, but it still gives us the property that we want. So we showed that co-systolic expander still have the topological overlapping properties. So if we're interested in answering Gorm's question, answering co-systolic, getting co-systolic expander is enough, and somehow to understand them is easier from the you know, combinatorial of the object, from the combinatorial properties of the object. But that it seems to contradict what you were just saying. If you have uh, a disconnected graph, surely it doesn't have this topological property, right? Uh, no, uh, this, go very good. If you have a disconnected graph, but what you want, so look on one connected component. Since it is large, you know that you, you, you have each connected component is large, then within this connected component, you have the overlapping property. And, and what you want, so this connected component uh, occupy constant fraction of your edges. So you, oh, I see. Because yeah. yeah, I guess I was confused because I thought that this topological property for graphs is equivalent to expansion, but now I see that it's no, uh, it's yeah. weaker. It's weaker. So you see, it's weaker. It, expansion implies it, but this is exactly weaker because if your graph is a co is a collection of constant many uh, co uh, components, each one is is an expander, it has this uh, topological overlapping, but it's not an expander according to our definition. Okay, Ali, so, yes? I mean, I guess an even, possibly an even weaker property that your complex would contain. Uh, exactly, just one large, just one large. One large. And because historic sort of asks for more, right? Yeah, so exactly. You, that's, so if your graph just contains, the commander expander is still going to have the topological of all of the property, right? Yes, 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 yes. But uh, somehow, uh, I don't, yeah, yeah. But once, I, I know to argue that everything is large. Yeah, OK, yeah. But you're right. One could define something in between. Uh, OK. So, so, so actually, what we aim is we aim to find the co-systolic expander. And, and the question is how to get it. As, as I said, we cannot get it from spectrum of higher order Laplacians, and we are going to get it from the links. So what is really, so our, our main theorem is that the, the criterion for cosystolic expansion is going to be like that. Uh, a complex will be a cosystolic expander if uh, all its links, all its links are co-boundary expanders. All its links, so we look on links of, of edges and of vertices, and each one by each one defined for us a small complex, and each and each one should be a co-boundary expander. So all the links should be co-boundary expanders, and they should be, and if we look, each link is itself a complex. If we view this complex and we consider it as a graph, so we consider the one skeleton. Uh, of each complex that describe a link, then we wonder that this graph is, is a very good expander. So these two properties, uh, if we have them, uh, then uh, the complex that we have at hand is going to be a cosystolic expander. So co-boundary expansion of the links, and the links are excellent spectral expanders as graphs. Uh, and when and when I and when I said the links are uh, excellent spectral expanders, uh, I there is in in in, uh, in simplicial complexes we think about uh, the empty set as also kind of an edge in, in so so we have the link of the empty sets which is also one of the links that we we consider and we want uh, we want basically that the whole complex will be uh, a good spectral expander. So if we kind of consider the graph behind this complex, it should be a, a very good spectral expander. So all the links should be co-boundary expander, and the, and the global object should be uh, a good spectral expander. If we have that, uh, then we get the cosystolic expansion. Uh, so this is roughly, I, I want to give you a flavor of what's going really on and why, why this is 
at all useful. And Tali, can you perhaps just specialize to the two-dimensional case, just to make yeah. sure we understand yeah, the yeah. Yeah, so so for the two-dimensional case, so good, very good. So so a link, uh, so the link, uh, the link of uh, uh, of vertices. Okay, so we have link of of vertices, uh, and we want them. Uh, the link of vertices are just one one dimension less. Are graphs. So so to. The so link of vertices are graphs, so if they are cobounded expander, for graph it for graph basically you require for the two-dimensional case you require that the link uh, that the link of every vertex which is itself a graph is a good expander and the whole object, the whole complex is a good expander uh, by itself. So for example, if you if you have a random graph or a random a, a random a random uh, uh, two-dimensional bounded degree two-dimensional complex, uh, then then you are going to get that the general object is going to be a good spectral expander, but the environment. But if you have a bounded degree, the the link of every vertex is going to be maybe a matching or, so, or something which is really not an expander. Yeah, if you kind of uh, if you draw, if you this, yeah, if you pick at random, I don't know, uh, uh, for every vertex you pick at random three triangles that are going to contain it, and only constant many triangles for each vertex, and and and, and you define your complex using that, then you are going to get the general picture. Uh, you are going to get something which is globally. If you now look on the picture that you got globally, is going to look like an expander, uh, but locally. The link of every vertex is going to be like a matching or something which is really not like an expander. So the whole miracle that is happening here is is that you get something which is globally an expander, but the link of every vertex is also an expander. Like if you draw a random bounded degree graph, you know that you have high girls, so the neighborhood of every vertex is empty. Uh, so yeah, so this is really the miracle uh, uh, in the one for getting the high dimensional expansion. You need to global expansion and, and local expansion to happen happen simultaneously. And just to generate such object, if you insist on bounded degree uh, object, this is difficult. Or this is know, in the two dimensional case, do you also look on the links of edges? Yes, uh, but the links of edges now will be just a set of vertices, so we don't require anything uh, for them. So you don't so, require anything for them? Yeah, don't require anything for them. Uh, yes. So could, uh, just to go back so, to your example, could you just add you know, all, all the triangles among yeah, your... Yeah, very nice. So, so now you would say, okay, so, so now one, one kind of uh, thought is like that. Well, let's do it. Let's if this is the criterion, let's just generate a, a, a bounded degree two-dimensional uh, uh, thing that will expand this way. Let's just, uh, 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 for example, uh, pick a, a bounded degree uh, graph at random, and now. So this will be general uh, globally. It is an expander, and now let's fill the links. So now let's look on the neighborhood of a vertex. Let's see all its neighbors, and let's put a, a click between them. And 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 yes, we are very satisfied. We got what we wanted. But you know, but know that this is actually not good because once once say you you taking care of a vertex, yeah, you fill its neighborhood by a click. You introduce more edges to other vertices, and, and this uh, kind of process, if you continue doing it, you will end up with the full complex. So you have no kind of nice way to fill the links and still have everything to be an expander and still uh, re maintain your bounded degree. Mm, I see. But for the full complex, I thought you told us it's not known, but you're saying from this it follows that full complex is, is okay, topological. Probably. Yeah, but for, for, for I mean, this is a criterion for the full complex. Gomov uh, proved it using other methods, but uh, but but for the 
full compass you see that is also uh, follow uh, obey uh, satisfy this uh, criterion and just to make sure what you're just telling us is that if you take a random uh, hypergraph uh, random complex it does not satisfy this sufficient condition but we don't know if it is or not uh, so so no so we know I mean a random a random hypergraph that you just uh, do by say selecting uh, uh, I don't know a, a, a random constant many uh, I don't know triangles touching each vertex then it is proven that it is not it is proven that it is not is that the uh, example with the Laplacian? Yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And this, it will be pseudo-random, it, it, but it, it will have nice Laplacians, but it will not, it is proven that it is not, uh, will not be uh, expander according to, to this stronger, no, the stronger combinatorial uh, requirement. Got it, thanks. Okay. So just a few words about why this criterion is at all useful. So why it is useful that you have global expander and, 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 and local expander is in the link. So assume that alpha, so your set of edges, is small and you want to show that its boundary is large. So why the links are helpful for you? So yes, we want to say, because we are in a cosystolic thing, so we want to say that everything that is small must expand, because we want to say that we are no, we don't have, th we might have things which, which do not expand and are not trivial, but everything that does not expand must be large. So everything small must expand. So how, how the local and global structure could help us, so this is the thing. So, so assume that your set of, of edges that you want to measure its expansion is these black edges. And this is your complex that is drawn here. Uh, now look on the link of the red vertex. So the link of the red vertex is, draw, is drawn there. And now, and now, and now the, the, the edge, uh, this red vertex in its link, it, it sees only the edge that contains it. So only one edge. So only the only the dark edge, which now in the link is corresponding to a vertex. Uh, and what what he th so what this link thinks? So this link thinks that every edge that go out of the black edges will correspond to a triangle that it hit odd many times. Yeah, he 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 doesn't know the upper the the uh, kind of the roof of the triangle. So all these red edges that he marked, he think of, of them as going to he mark as potential triangles that seems to him as in the boundary uh, of, of, of the set of edges. But he doesn't see this roof. So he doesn't see that one of them, that the small red edges is actually is not going, because you see, it, it, um, in the in the boundary uh, uh, of this two, how many triangles are in the boundary of of of, of the edges that I draw? Uh, um, so two of them are going to be in the boundary because they are heated only once. But there is one triangle that it heated twice, but it doesn't see it in its link. So he thinks that that many triangles are going to be in the boundary. So, but uh, but but how this global and, and local expansion is going to play a role is that by the global expansion, uh, 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 since alpha is small, we know that for a typical vertex, only few edges of alpha are going to touch it, and and so this induces a small set in the link. Like in my example, it's a set of size exactly one in the link, and since the link is an expander. There are many edges that leave this marked set, this one, since the link is an expander. So the link thinks that all the edges that leave this marked set, they are all triangles that are in the boundary of alpha. However, this is not true, because one triangle is not in the boundary, because we see that one triangle that is, we marked its edge, actually it's not in the boundary, it's touched twice by alpha. So there are cancellations, there are things that does not happen correct and the link doesn't see them. However, the global expansion 
of the whole comp the whole object will tell us that these cancellations do not happen a lot. So somehow, if if all if kind of the link sees that many things are in the boundary, this is indeed what uh, is going to happen. Uh, so somehow the so somehow uh, the if and so somehow only few cancellation will happen. So expansion could be the global expansion could be deduced from the expansion that the links see. So somehow I don't know I don't know if it gave you some flavor of what's going on, but somehow this is the idea behind everything. Uh, so every link thinks that something is in the boundary, but there can be some cancellations. But due to the global expansion, there are few cancellations. So if many links th link thinks that that the boundary of alpha is going to be large, this is indeed going to be the case. But all this argument only works for small sets. Uh, and in my work with Kashdan and, and Alex Lubatsky, we have shown that there is a reduction, that actually if you prove it for all small sets, then you can, you can get the D minus one. Uh, so if you have a D dimensional complex, you can look on its D minus one skeleton uh, on and, the, and in that complex, all sets will expand. So there is some reduction from small sets to all sets. Um, so I have only a few minutes left. So I'll just tell you that there, are, there is an object that is called the Ramanujan complex, which is generalized the, the, the Lubotsky, Philip, and Sarna construction of Ramanujan graphs. Uh, and, and this is a, a higher dimensional uh, simplicial complex about the degree one. And it happens uh, that, uh, that its links satisfy our criterion. So its links are, are called spherical buildings, and its links were proven by Gromov and others to be cobaltic expanders. And although the one skeleton of the links of, or Everything is good spectral expander. So somehow, for the Ramanujan complexes, the links are covalent expanders, and the whole and they are also good spectral expander, and the whole object is a good spectral expander. So using our criterion that if the links are good covalent expanders and everything is and they are good spectral expanders in all levels, we actually got our result. So we got explicit bounded degree. Cosystolic expander, so the D skeleton of a D plus one Ramanujan complex is a bounded degree cosystolic expander because, because we know about the links that it satisfies both the requirements of our criterion and, and using one of the uh, thing that relates a cosystolic expander to topological overlapping to things that have the topological overlapping things we get that the D skeleton of the D plus one Ramanujan complex is a bounded degree complex with a topological overlapping. This is how we solve the global question. Uh, somebody want to ask questions? Yeah, quick question to make sure I understand. The links are all of constant size, right? It's a bounded degree yes. graph. So yeah, if they're connected, is it enough to just uh, get co-boundary expansion? Or do you need more than so, that? So, well, no, so, so the links are constant degree, but you need them to be uh, co-boundary expanders, so you need them, uh, uh, so you need to think about them to, when you enlarge them, so when you use them in the Ramanujan complex, you put them of constant degree, but what you want is that you, when you take them to any scale, which, when we think about them in some large scale, then they are still co-bound, they are co-boundary expanders, and this is what Gromov proved. So Gromov proved uh, I'm not sure. So I mean, the, the the links have ten vertices, right? It's like exactly, but okay. but but the links have ten vertices, so so everything is gone. But but actually, the links have so there there is the links have a q square, I don't know, some q square vertices, and their degree is a square root of q or something like that. So so we one can pick q to be small, independent of n. But you need to show that for n every q, so the combinatory expansion that uh, that you need to show is that when you let q to to grow, so when you think about them like like complete graph, yes, is it when you think that uh, is it an is it a combinatory expander or, or not? If it's a complete graph on 
on 10 vertices. Is it the Hobart expander or not? So what you want is you want to think about it in large scales, okay, and, and, and ask this question. So so Gormov and, and so he kind of okay, they you you have an instantiation of them on 10 vertices, but you can you need to think about generalization in uh, Yes, they have uh, these uh, um, spherical buildings. They have q q vertices, and the, the degree is square root q or something like that. So, so, uh, so you need to say, well, if I take for for q vertices and square root q, is this a cobandry expanded? So you see that it is not bounded degree because the degree depends on the number of vertices. So, so, uh, so. The spherical buildings are not bounded degree, but you're using, and, the, and for them, Gomov proved the coboundary expansion, but you use instan but in the Ramanujan complexes, you, you use instantiation of them, which is of bounded degree, or, which is of constant size. Does so, it make sense? So in your criterion, um, what, in your, what? In your, in your criterion, I, I, I wanted to have to, to, to the links to be cobandry expanders. Now, um, uh, it, the, the, um, the That's some parameters. So what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, it's epsilon cobandry expanders. Epsilon cobandry expanders, but, but, but yeah, epsilon cobandry expanders. And if it's half, is it OK? Or are you only getting half? No, I mean, it's, it, it, the thing is not about how, how large is this constant. Um, uh, is not that. Um, is not if you um, so so you want this constant to be independent of for, for 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 things to work you want this constant to be independent of of the so it will not work if I take the links to be of size ten I need to to to, to it to be large enough um, so some uh, some you want arbitrarily large. Uh, yeah, arbitrary, that still yeah, arbitrary have large. some constant yeah. expansion. You don't want the yeah. expansion to deteriorate as you go yeah. as you get bigger. Yeah, exactly, 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 okay. exactly, exactly. Okay. So if I just took, like, if I think of the graphs, if I just took like a cycle that has some expansion, but it deteriorates as the cycle gets bigger. Exactly, 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 exactly. Uh -huh. uh, and this is basically uh, okay. Let's skip this. Uh, so this is uh, exactly uh, actually the the result, and uh, and since I'm already over time, I'll just mention uh, uh, some quick open problems. So so uh, I think very little is known. So so it, we don't know if random bounded degree high dimension. So we don't know of any random construction of bounded degree combinatorial expanders. Uh, we don't know bounded degree co-boundary expanders because our construction is a bounded degree, the a weaker notion, which is the cosystolic thing. Uh, we don't random. We don't know e anything either cosystolic or uh, or the or co-boundary. Uh, of course, I think very interesting. I'm sure that there are going to be application to computer science, and these are yet to be found. And I think that even if one does not like hypergraphs or high-dimensional objects. Actually, if you just think about about the one skeleton of something that is a high dimensional expander, it tells you that it expands with respect to edges, not only with respect to vertices, which is what we are used to, but also with respect to edges and triangles. And this is really a stronger notion and, and probably is useful somewhere. So uh, yeah, so this is it, I, I think. So roughly on time, roughly. Uh, yeah, so if you have more questions. So this is this Thanks, is it. Um, yeah, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so we ha uh, we had quite a few questions uh, during the talk, but uh, if there are other questions, yeah. Okay. Good. We have uh, MIT question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Okay, sorry, I got off camera. But no, so I just said, maybe you said this and maybe I missed it. I was just wondering if, so um, you did not describe your construction, right? Say it again? You did not describe your construction. So I say that my construction is, is to take uh, the, uh, the Ramanujan complex, which are, which are known, which is the construction which is known, 
and and okay. but I cannot say that the Ramanujan complexes themselves uh, are. Uh, uh, I cannot say I cannot take the the d-dimensional Ramanujan complex and to say that this is a d-dimensional uh, complex with a topological overlapping. I have to take its d minus one skeleton. So I lose something. So if I want a d a d uh, uh, a d-dimensional complex that expands, I have to take the d uh, a d plus one Ramanujan complex, which is something which is well known, explicitly known. And take its d uh, skeleton. So, and and this is the construction. So, and these things are known. So, uh, uh, yeah. So the f so what we show is that the d minus one skeletons have the property that we want. All right. Thanks. So uh, I think that uh, if one just take uh, one lesson, if you just think about it, if you, you don't think of, care about anything, the question is if one could come up with a graph which is a, glob a bounded degree of a graph, which is an expander globally, and the link in the neighborhood of every vertex is also an expander. And, 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 and to see the magic that happened in the Ramanujan complexes, this is exactly the magic. It, it happens in higher dimensions, but, but even to, to do the dimensional case. Just if you just want to think, how could one construct a graph which is global, a bounded degree, so the point is, bounded degree graph which is globally an expander, and the local link of f vertex is also an expander. If, uh, to, the miracle of these Ramanujan complexes is exactly this. They actually materialize this thing. You mean hypergraph, right? You mean to construct hypergraph? Hyp so, so even so, you can think about so hypergraph. But I think for because we can think about about the uh, uh, one skeleton of hy for hypergraph. Oh, right. So, so you can think about actually a graph. So, just construct a graph that is a that that is an expander, is a bounded degree, and the neighborhood of every vertex is not empty as we and is not uh, mildly full, full, but is really an expander. So, this is somehow uh, the so, so I think that my message is that something like this implies this strong property of Luomov. And, and just if you think about it yourself, you see that it's not easy or it's not clear how to get it. Just this re combinatorial requirement that uh, this captures the, what happened in the harmonic complex and then the difficulty in this object. Just this thing that I have just described. And, and, and just to uh, just to tie it back with the thing that Ed was asking at the very end, uh, so when you look at the neighborhood of any particular vertex, if it's constant degree, then the neighborhood graph is also of constant size. Exactly. And when you say you want it to be expanding, you mean something with the, which is like a fixed number expansion, okay, not so, something so, deteriorating. With. Yeah, so yeah, that will not deteriorate. So think about D. It has a neighborhood D, and think about this expansion as independent of D. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what you want. This expansion to be independent of D. And, so and, and, and if it's a D plus one, if it's a D-dimensional uh, complex, if it's a dimen then you want even more. So you want that that you have not only expanders on vertices, that the link of every edge is also right. an expansion. So you want even more and more and more. But I think just to, to get the idea of the miracle, the miracle really happened in a two-dimensional thing. And, and, and just to answer my question, uh, we don't know of any construction, either random or explicit, that, that, uh, that yield what I just asked. Uh, the only thing that we know is, uh, is the Ramanujan uh, accomplices. And if any one of you can come up with a construction that is a, a, a bounded degree graph that the neighborhood of every vertex is on also an expander, then you would come up with new or random or whatever uh, 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 combinatorial two-dimensional expander, which we don't know. The only example we have is the is this Ramanujan complex thing. So, For example, uh, a KD graph or something won't work, right? Because then the neighborhood is just the generating set or something, and then that... Say it again? I'm saying I was just wondering, like, what typical constructions of expanded graphs? So, for so example, if I take a scaly graph and uh, and uh, no, 
So typical construction of rough like random ones, they normally they have large gaps, so they don't even have any edges in the neighborhood of a vertex. So normally they have like so you could try and impose, uh, you can try and make the girl small, so you can put edges in the neighborhood of a vertex. This you could do, but as I said, the neighborhood will still look like a matching or something like this. It will anyway not look like an expander. So, uh, so somehow, really, this is the miracle of the Ramanujan. And how come the Ramanujan uh, escapes this fate? Because it has the same high girth property, right? Ramanujan graphs have high girth. No, the Ramanujan graphs, they, 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 the, the Ramanujan graphs I mean the LPS. are from the LPS, exactly. But, but the, uh, they are uh, quotient of, uh, the, the, Ramanujan, the LPS, they are quotients of practice tree. There is the brackets building, so there is an infinite, there is an infinite high dimension, say two-dimensional complex, and, and the Ramanujan complex is actually quotient of this infinite, infinite. Uh, so, so if it's a if it's a, a two-dimensional complex, clearly it has triangles, so its girls is not high. So, so the high girls are the uh, the one-dimensional uh, construction of LPS in the two-dimensional thing is is it, contain, it comes from things that contain triangles, so in, in infinite object that has many, that con, composed of vertices, edges, and triangles, and, and the modular thing is a quotient of this infinite object. So is there an easy way to describe the graph you get from this? Does the graph have this amazing property? Uh, is there any, um, so is there any way for you to describe the LPS thing, so it's roughly if you have if you have an idea of where this one comes from, it's come from. I mean, if you have an, an easy way or some any way that you can think of how to describe the LPS, so the LPS there is a bracket tree and and you quotient it by something and, and actually and to, and the question and to see that uh, as Alex Lubotsky uh, used to say is that everyone he said that everyone that works for him get the field medals. I mean to see so the the so to see that the quotient is really nice thing, uh, this uh, I think uh, Lafour got a field medalist for that. Anyway, so I'm saying if you have a way to see why the LPS graph is an expander, somehow uh, uh, because it, you uh, you will so the links is clear since the links of the infinite object. So it's easy. Okay, it's easy to see that the links of the infinite objects are good. The, but the, the difficult thing is that you can come and look on the quotient, uh, and, and in the quotient thing, everything up to very far distance look like in the building, like in the infinite thing. So somehow, uh, but yeah, I don't have an easy way to, to say what is it really, because it would correspond to an easy way to say what is the LPS graph, which I don't. Yeah. Have no, I was hoping maybe there's a back was black box way of deriving it from the LPS graph, or just actually any no, intuition. It's not, it's yeah, not, it's not. It's not because the yeah, so so you have so you uh, uh, it's folded. Folded, yeah, exactly. So so the LPS the LPS graph is coming from for, for some sophisticated way to fold the infinite tree, and this one come from a sophisticated way to fold uh, an infinite uh, two dimensional object. Yeah. No, um, uh, I guess this this object, this graph you get, might also by itself have applications. Uh, given that graphs show show up a lot in CS. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think that as a graph, as a graph, uh, so yeah, as a graph, I, I really feel that as a graph, it has the potential to have just the graph that represents this two-dimensional complex, whatever. Uh, yeah, should have as a graph application in CS. I, I, I think that this is really possible. Any question? Uh, if we don't have further questions, then maybe we can go up there. OK. Um, so thanks, everyone. I'll go offline, but we can, you're welcome to stay here and chat a bit longer.